Chapter 8 We got off somewhere near Chinatown, headed east toward Lake Merritt, surfing a wave of green lights turning yellow, one after the other, as we crossed each intersection. The train was flat with a slight incline, then a slight corresponding decline, then sloping down to a small park on the other side of which was Harrison Street and the lake, Snow Park. Freddy drove carefully. He wasn't interested in hot-shotting with the young bloods and their escalades with the spinning rims, or their tricked-out old Impalas or new Mustangs and Chargers, whatever. Freddy was proven. He used to show off back in the 60s and 70s. He even raced cars up near Cap City at a number of oval tracks, most of which had long since been shut down. He fixed and raced cars, drag racing. He had his fill. My first eyes on Lake Merritt. There were old standing lantern-type lights all around, spaced evenly about the lake. Three miles around, with one of the first ever bird sanctuaries in the nation. A little island, the only one where all these amazing species found refuge throughout the year. The climate here was described as almost Mediterranean. I would say bland. The lake drained into the bay, or vice versa, whichever one felt like giving. There was the cathedral light on the north shore, a museum on the west. The south shore was the entrance to Death Valley of East Oakland via Foothill and International. Long, wide boulevards where weekends saw neighborhood rallies and marches against violence. Because sadly, of the hundred or so homicides in Oakland every year, probably half of them occurred in East Oakland, on or near these two renowned boulevards. Gang shootings sent stray bullets due north and south down the streets, infrequently finding lodging under some poor, sweet baby's skin. Death was a frequent flyer. Chapter 9 The sun was drawing its blood into the sky, which immediately turned orange before dark. The colors filtered from yellow and pink, and the light rinsed away. The sky was the sink, and the basin turned black. All night long we drove around East Oakland, stopping here and there so Freddy could visit with friends. I was left in the van for about a half an hour, near dawn. Freddy had stepped into one of a thousand nondescript apartment buildings on the side of the lake. He had taken the keys, which I thought was uncalled for. I wanted to listen to some classical music down the dial. Scriabin, Rachmaninoff, all six foot six inches of them to cool all that wonderful hip-hop burning my ears, to calm my nerves. He knew better than to make a simple mistake. I confess, I would have driven as far east as one could go on a tank of gas had he left me the keys. Looking back on that time, yes, it was a new beginning, and I was excited. But life always looks better in the rearview mirror. Pimps and whores walked the street. How did a woman get so low she would let herself stroll the sidewalks, all cracked out with the most pernicious of men, these merchants of souls? It was difficult to fathom until I reached the foregone conclusion typical to the human condition, fear. I had plenty of time awaiting Freddy to watch the drunk and otherwise intoxicated folks of all shapes, sizes, and colors pass by. Some walked the street proper, others took to the sidewalk. No one saw I was there, until this one dark and hairy barnacle came slipping up through the parked cars, weaving quickly in and out. I could see him through the mirror, and just had to wonder.